Parliament, as we know, is no stranger to fierce debate. But yesterday, Jackie Lambie, well, she took things to a whole new level, blasting Pauline Hanson over an attempt to scrap vaccine mandates. Being held accountable for your own actions isn't called discrimination. It's called being, you wouldn't believe it, a goddamn bloody adult. That's right as being an adult. It's putting others before yourself. And that's what this country is supposed to be about. The way out of lockdowns and restrictions is vaccinations because there is nothing else on the table. Let's be honest about that. It is the only weapon we have. And we need to do everything we possibly can to keep ourselves safe, our kids safe, our grandchildren safe. And the straight shooting Tasmanian Senator Jackie Lambie joins us now from Parliament Woo! House. Go, Jackie, go, Jackie, go. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie, I mean, as Carl said this morning, it was classic Jackie, but, I mean, there, there was emotion, and I get very emotional even listening to that. Just talk us through it. Um, I think for me, you know, I've been on the ground a lot in Tasmania, obviously coming into a campaign. Um, I didn't come up to the last sitting um, so I could go out there, speak to those Tasmanians, and you can see that that taste of freedom where most of them have gone up and said, I'm making a choice, I am going to be vaccinated, I want my freedoms back, and really, let's be realistic, Jackie, is there anything else on the table? I'm going, there is nothing else on the table. This is the only weapon of defence we've got to fight it. So, you know, you can see that momentum going there, and usually the majority just goes, OK, we'll deal with it, we'll just be quiet. They're not going to be quiet. They want their freedoms back, they really do, and they really are concerned about... We've been very lucky in Tasmania, we haven't had much of a bite of it. I think we've been into lockdown once and, and Hobart had a bite the southern end um, only probably about five or six weeks ago for three days, and I can tell you they don't like it. And it, it, they, they, they're frightened. You know, they, they're worried about... We have a population per capita of the most elderly down there in Tasmania. We have a lot of vulnerable um, families down there. We have a lot of homeless people down there, let alone kids and families living in their cars. So people down there are going, I've really got to look after my grandparents. I've got to make sure my kids are staying safe. They are really putting putting themselves, putting everybody before themselves, and you can really see that momentum driving down there. And I think yeah. that's great. I mean, that's a Tasmanian way. That, but we're very clicky down there, and you know, you, we usually stand together as one. But Jackie, I think it, I think it's broader than, than Tassie, and you know, and it is this debate over you know these freedoms of people to do what they want with their bodies. But you, the moment for me where I went here here was when you talked about where we're putting others first and thinking about others, like our elderly, like those we've got who've got family members who. For medical reasons can't be vaccinated. Um, it, it, from, from that moment, like, w was that difficult to stand up and deliver that? And did the level of emotion that you showed, did it surprise you in that moment? No, I don't think so, because for me, I've always been brought up to put others first. I mean, I'm ex-military, you put others first. That's what you do, you put your lives on the line. That's normality for me, that's how I understand it. So, you know, when I can see um, that people are making decisions and that's probably going to cause others harm, I actually get quite upset about that and say, please just reconsider your decisions Go back, um, have a think about it, because really it is for the better of the country and everybody else living here. I'm just asking them to go back and have a good look at it. Because mm. bottom line is, Ali, they are going to lose their freedoms. That's not my choice. That's not your choice. That's 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 really not Premier's and, and Prime Minister's choices. You've got businesses out there that are on their knees saying, I can't afford to do a deep clean. I cannot afford to shut down. I mm. cannot afford for my staff to get sick. You know, the best way, the best defence we've got to fight this is what on the table, and that is getting vaccinated. Mm. And that's the only thing we've got. Well, look, I mean, this, this push to scrap vaccine mandates, it was ultimately defeated, but you had five coalition senators cross the floor to support One Nation. That's a real problem for Scott Morrison, isn't it? Because he's downplayed it, but he's got big differences within his party that are going to be impossible to overcome. I think um, I think it's not helping if you don't have a solid leader that is leading the country that wants to try and please everybody. This is a really serious situation that we're in and he needs to stick by his guns and he needs to get on with this, but he can't be playing both sides of... Uh, both sides of the debate here. We can see what vaccinations are doing. We're all getting a taste of our freedoms coming back and he needs to be really, really solid here. Uh, it is a broad church, apparently, the Liberal Party, as they like to call it. Um, but my uh, my point will be, well, you haven't got your bill through. Uh, is it over yet? Are you going to say, that's it, I'm not voting for any legislation? Mm. How big 
are you going to stand up with the threats that you've actually made? So this is what we're all looking forward to today. Mm. Well, and we know that Senator Pauline Hanson, she said she's going to fight to the death against vaccine mandates. Are you up for that battle and also for the backlash that's going to come your way, particularly on social media, from the anti-vaxxers? Um, yeah, I think um, over my eight years in and out of politics, um, I've, we've sort of become quite resilient to that, which is great. I certainly have. Um, it does worry me um, with my staff. They do get abused on the phone. There is really no need for that. If you want to put your point across, that's fine. Please do so. But don't, don't, don't be using the C word at my staff. Don't be swearing at them. Don't be abusing them. Uh, mm. This is something that, you know, we all contributed to. We all, I got up. I delivered that speech. That is the way my staff feel. But please, please don't abuse them. And don't don't abuse other people that don't agree with the choices that you are making. Everybody, this is why we have freedoms in this country, to be able to make the choices that we make and we wear the consequences, good or bad, for that. Look, you stood up yesterday, Jackie, and plenty applauded you for it. We, you know, you're a straight shooter. We always know what you're thinking and uh, most Australians appreciate that. Good luck for the rest of the uh, two weeks of sittings, huh? It's going to be fun. <laughs> I know yesterday was only day one. And I'll tell you what, Carl, I want to see you in one of those Christmas suits, mate. Honestly, go off. <laughs> what about the Clive Palmer outfit? Both of you just stop. Oh, what was the Clive Palmer outfit? You know, oh, that outfit! Oh, no, no, no. Don't, don't. You're just don't, jealous because you don't have my, you don't have a body like mine, sweetie. Now, come on, you you know that you know that. <laughs> what about Clive Palmer? <laughs> Thanks, Jack. Right, <laughs> wow, fat shaming. Oh no, I don't, don't do like it. I just don't like it. <laughs> All right, that was interesting.